In this section, we're going to outline the Cord app that we're going to be building throughout the rest of the bootcamp. We're going to be building a simple Cord app called the Token Cord app. And the Token Cord app will allow nodes to issue digital tokens onto the ledger. And so this, this Cord app will have three parts. It'll have a token state class that will represent the actual digital tokens themselves. It'll have a token contract class that governs how our tokens can evolve over time. So our contract will do things like ensure that each issuant creates a positive amount of digital tokens on the ledger, and it'll also check that the issuing node has signed the creation of the new digital tokens. And finally, we have the token issue flow class. And this flow will handle the end-to-end -end process of issuing the digital tokens. So everything from messaging the other nodes to um, creating the data structures to storing them um, in the nodes database. And it can be helpful to compare these three parts to their equivalents in Bitcoin. So in Bitcoin, the token states would be the equivalent of the individual Bitcoin outputs, right? The token states represent these coins on the ledger. Then the token contract would be like Bitcoin's script rules. So in Bitcoin, there's these rules that when you do a transfer of Bitcoin, well, the amount of Bitcoin in must be more than or equal to the amount of Bitcoin out. So you can't just create cash out of thin air. And also that the current owner of the Bitcoin being transferred must sign the transaction. And our token contract will impose similar rules. And finally, we have the token issue flow, which doesn't really have an equivalent in Bitcoin. So in Bitcoin, the process of building a transaction, signing it, messaging it, sending it around the network is relatively manual. And it's only in quarter that you have this concept of a flow that can automate this business logic. Let's go back to the Bootcamp Cord app in IntelliJ. So we looked at this briefly in the getting set up section. We didn't really look at what this um, project did. Well, this project is the um, skeleton project where we'll be implementing the token Cord app. And there's three main folders you need to be aware of. So if we go here under source, main, Java, this is where we're actually going to be implementing our token state, our token contract, our token issue flow. Then here we have um, some examples of different contract states, flows, just so you can refer back to those during the exercises. And finally, we have this test folder here. And here we have the state test, the contract test, the flow tests, as well as the project imported OK test we ran earlier. And these tests will allow us to develop the state, the contract, and the issue flow in a test-driven development style. So our role in each of the practical exercises will be to implement token state or implement token contract or implement token issue flow in such a way that it makes the test pass. And so the, before we move on, the first thing we want to do is just open up this token issue flow. So you can see it here on the screen. And so as we said, a flow is a class that describes how the node should get some piece of work done, some ledger update done. In this case, we've got our token issue flow. And inside the call method, we've got various pieces of logic. So you can see already here, we are you know, picking a notary. We're getting our own identity. Further down, we're verifying a transaction. We're signing a transaction. And we're calling the finality flow, which will notarize and record the transaction. But as you can see, this flow is still incomplete. So firstly, we need to define our token state to actually represent the on-ledger tokens. We don't have a class yet to represent these tokens on the ledger. So that'll be the point of the first practical exercise to define that token state class. Then if we look at to do two, we need to write a token contract to control token issuance. So contracts go how we're going to impose rules around the issuance of tokens. And as we said, we want to impose rules like you can't uh, issue a negative amount of tokens and the issuer of the tokens has to sign the transaction issuing the tokens. And writing those constraints will be part of our second um, set of practical exercises. And then finally, in our third set of practical exercises, we'll come back to actually the building of the transaction itself. So in part three, we'll look at flows and we'll look at how you create a transaction builder, creating the states and the commands and all the other stuff we're going to look at and adding that to the transaction builder to build a valid transaction. And once we've done these three to-dos in the three practical sections, then we'll have a fully working cord app that will allow us to issue tokens onto the ledger.